So a quick tutorial on Debussy's The Girl with the Flaxen Hair Prelude. Beginning is usually very easy. Right, you just play through those four different notes with obvious fingerings. And then trouble begins because you have to do these rapid moves in position. So of course, before you start, make sure that the left hand is ready. still that right hand leap so when I practice things like that I always highlight my leaps I always mark them and I practice them so it, there's no room for error I'm here on a G flat with a pink highlight and I just do that motion right until I know I've got all three even four notes if you think about it under my position under my hand position I'm on G flat and all I'm doing is this because then I know I can play the rest of it I like this technique of sliding the fifth finger down all right. and then you've got the very long chord during which you have to make position adjustments so let's think what's coming up you have to be here of different ways to finger it maybe three two three like written maybe one three is a good idea to a one two four so you have to experiment I will give my currently uh, currently comfortable fingers that seem to make sense other options are possible think of it how about we do one and then a two and then keep one two three yeah, I, I like that for the right hand so if you've decided on those fingers and you're here let's highlight it uh, blue indigo you need to be here so that means I'm going to go and mark this which means yeah you're hearing these notes that I crossed out but you're not holding those notes that's very important the pedal that you see written I'll highlight it right here is doing that holding for you so you have to practice these leaps ahead of time but let's look at the uh, left hand Right. In measure 5 we have to play these. I will use 1-3 myself. I think that's a good fingering pattern to start this particular phrase. And then there's that difficult chord with four notes that are impossible to play together. Alright, so with, with that said and done, I want to be here ahead of time which is to say right here so I, I hope you saw the move one more time let me just cross this out as well All right or let's have a cleaner pedal make sure it's, it comes down here then you move the hands like this Make sure to do that right here, right where you see the pink highlight. And then after that, things are pretty easy. Whoops. Here we go. Measure five. And it's all about playing different chords. This chord and this chord. And that chord. This chord. You know, measure six chord. Finally, that's that's the interpretation I like. Hit the bottom two notes first, and then leap up and play the other two notes. And it's all 
really small finger adjustments. So they're not full position shifts, but they are position shifts for individual fingers that you have to master. So for instance, in measure five, right, you're basically in position to play everything except for what? For that next chord, you have to play the B flat and the finger, the thumb in the left hand is on A flat. So you have to do that. Again, the nice thing is the pedal is your friend. Once you push it down, you can let go. The sound keeps going, right? So adjust. And now, do you see that thing happening in my right hand? That's what I have to do. I have to strike the second chord, change the pedal, right? You see that green highlight indicating my pedal is engaged. And then as I've got it engaged, I can move. So I would do these motions very consciously so, that, so they become actively practiced, not just left to chance. I would even maybe adjust my left hand's second finger, right? Because, and I'll use the bracket to show what I mean. That bracket shows three different notes. I can get them all ready. I play these two, then I play these two, but they're all ready to go. And again, same thing, slight adjustment from here in the left hand to here. Right? So all these little things you have to analyze and actually take time to practice. It's the practice where you don't play the notes. It's practice where you shift. Okay? Here's the big motion, which I'll highlight in pink one more time, because that's definitely something to practice. One more time. Right, so you jump and then you freeze to check that you jumped correctly. That's where you need to be, right? That's the position. Before it, you're here. So that's all you have to do. You're here, and then you have to be here. It's not self-evident, it's not intuitive, you just have to practice it. And then that's a, a small practice inside that large chord. Okay, then before you continue anything, you've got that pedal, you see it underneath, right here. That means you have time to move your hands right here before anything happens. Let's figure out the best fingering. Yeah, I like one, three, four there. And then one, two, three, one, three, four, like this. And notice where my thumb is in my right hand. So the name of the game is prepare as many notes ahead of time as you humanly can. And then everything else you'll have to adjust for as you proceed. So that's my position. Basically, if I bracket off what I've prepared, it's all of these notes. Right, all five notes ready. In the left hand, it's these notes. So I'm excluding the C because I'll have to move the thumb to the C. But otherwise, these other four notes I've got ready. So same thing, we have the pedal down. And that allows me to instantly shift my position. I don't have to wait until the last moment to move my thumbs, right? I know my thumbs need to move, and so I'm going to do it. Uh, maybe I'll have a different color highlight for a small adjustment. Right? That little orange highlight is telling you, hey, move, do that. Make sure that motion happens in both thumbs. And continue. just kept on going you know, that's all you did you're fine unfortunately you have to get out of that and so I'm gonna put another indigo highlight after this point you have to start shifting your position in the right hand and the left hand so what happens is the 
left hand is done, it's going to have to play these notes. So, in your score, some highlight, some symbol that tells you, I have to move. In the right hand, you don't have to leap anywhere, but you still see that some lower chords are coming up. Right? And so as a result, you have to start using different fingers after this indigo highlight. And that I think 3-5 makes sense. You could do 4-5, you can try 4-5, four, 4, that's also possible. Prevents you from having to change 3 for a 4 later. That way you only have to flick out your first finger. So there are definitely a couple of options that help you to get you your fingers to where they need to where they need to be because that's how you want to end up and then a slight adjustment while you're holding that chord on b3 before the very final uh, moment in that last measure here so that's that's a small leap i'll highlight it and you do as well. And that brings us to the next line, which is thankfully a little easier. Again, I like this five down to white key slide. That three changes to a five so that you can play the rest of the G flat finger position notes. have been paying attention you will notice that well you're not exactly ready to play these uh, highlight like this these notes yet and so we need to do something about it my suggestion is actually to maybe even do that well, let me finger it and then you'll see what I mean so at the beginning of this line, even though you can easily play these bottom uh, two notes in the left hand with one and three as shown, I think going to three and five, while somewhat tricky, sets you up perfectly for those green highlights. Right, and then it, it doesn't take a lot of effort to play the notes in the left hand. Course, those right hand notes as well maybe a little hard to see so I'll just point it out that particular double slash in, in the on top of the right hand basically means break break in time it means da -di, and today by the way means slowing down da -di -da -to. Three, pa, 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 stop, readjust position, and then you'll see that it's not obvious, but all these notes are played in the right hand. So starting from the low D flat, you'll notice my nose kind of shifting over my left hip because I'm rolling over, so I can do this. It's a big, big chord. in one hand luckily right so that's that's what's going on there you're going all the way down all the way down then you stop on that break two slashes just get set and then there you are there are a couple of different fingering options I think two and three is fine one two three five probably and then in the meanwhile you were supposed to do what? Of course. So not only do you have that position adjustment in the right hand, you also have to leap all the way up here in the left hand. So that move among a tempo measure. Both hands have to move and you'll notice I moved incorrectly. So one more time. That's better. There you go. 
So once you master those two pink moves, whoops, don't play yet. Move, but don't play, right? So one more time. Oh, I didn't even play that correctly. Move, and now you know you're ready, so just right hand only. G, A, C, D, E, G. Extend in the, in the right hand, and now. Is it correct to play this way? Seems correct, but, <coughs> excuse me, we have something coming up in the left hand, right? So, that's more correct. Because then, ooh, I have to be here. Panic, stutter, right? You're not doing so well, so. One more time. Make sure you're on that G flat. Is that correct? Of course not. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so we go back here and we add one more highlight. Right? So every time you see a highlight, it means you have to leap. You have to practice the motion of the position change. It's a very specific motion that, that's nothing about playing, it's just about moving sideways. So finally we get to <coughs> this uh, measure of 14, I guess, which uh, has its own challenges because you have to play... Hmm. I wonder if the better fingers are possible. Maybe not. Just one of those annoying spots. So it starts with one, two, and two, five. Super quiet. You can squeeze your right hand together. And if you do that, you're in trouble. Why? Because you're nowhere near ready to play the rest of the left hand. So. show it but in reality your pedal is doing something like that so you come down you come up you come down you come up you come down oops you come down you come up and then you stay down <coughs> okay Because you've come down on that pedal on B2, uh, which I'll show, you need to move, which means, boom, oops, uh, wrong, let's do the pink. Yeah. If you do that, you'll be fine. And same thing will happen here on B3. play the grace note C flat by itself and then and they change the pedal as they do it so they strike it pedal comes up comes down and then they leap so uh, that's a good uh, first section of the piece which already discusses most of the problems that you need to solve to play it and I think it's a good um, goal to work towards at first because if you finish this and then you know let's say you go to the very end of it you can actually play just that much and then the final line and it'll sound like a beautiful complete shortened but a complete piece
so so that just allows you to have two bookends of this longer work uh, which then gives you the possibility of playing you know learning the rest of it and so on but i would start with that beginning sort out through all those crazy leaps make sure that they make sense and then see, see what else needs to happen i can definitely create another part for this piece at some point but uh, so far that's what you get